Okay, so I have already explained these things. Okay, so now coming to the case structure, which you already know. I won't spend much time here. So here, any particular open form case is consisting of constant zero and system folder. And within constant, you have the mesh files, which is polymesh, which can be consisting of points, faces, owner, neighbors, boundary, and, and other transport properties, if you want to include. And then system will have the main control file, which is control dig. It will have the solution files, or all the details about the linear algebra solvers in every solution. And it will also have uh, all the CFD schemes relevant to your computation in the every schemes file, right? So, and the zero folder is for initial and boundary condition. So it will have all the initial and boundary condition for the relevant fields like pressure, velocity, temperature. It can be for anything, any scalar transport equation that you are solving. For what, uh, for which you need some initial and boundary condition, you need to include it in the zero folder. Correct? Okay, so this you know that there are different solvers and there are different schemes like simple, you already have used icoform, simple form, pimple form, and which is uh, actually based on these different solution algorithms of Navier Stokes equation, simple, PSO, pimple, and they are all available in open form. Now, yeah, so this is some details of these files, but I will skip it uh, if you have already gone through it. So I need some feedback. Do you already know all these files and details? Yes. Can you please say a little bit about this? About which particular file in this? So I will only detail that. Otherwise, I do not want to repeat it. So in these files, on which you need the details? Or all of this, what is the majority say? I would ask Dr. Janani, like, what should I do? Should I explain or skip? So I think they are quite familiar with the structure. Most okay. of what you have said. Uh, Vivek, do you have a specific requirement which you would like to talk about? Or you can no, ma'am. No, okay. ma'am. Please go through. Yeah, because okay. Ashley's uh, recording would be there where we had detailed. Uh, okay. Great. Assuming that you know all this. I will jump straight into the uh, the new thing that you are basically here to learn. So, starting with this disclaimer again, OpenFOAM is not a CFD code. It is an open source C++ library of classes for writing CFD codes. Okay, so you can write your own CFD codes using OpenFOAM, other than using the already existing tutorials. So OpenFOAM, as I already told, OpenFOAM C++ library has two parts mainly. One is solvers, others is utilities. And so what do we mean by namespace, first of all? So how many of you have heard of this name namespace? No one. Okay. So namespace in C++ or object-oriented programming in other languages also is a terminology by which they standardize the main classes and objects, okay? Main classes particularly. Like in C++, normally you see that the STD is the main namespace that you use for standard declaration, right? For input, output, and other things. And similarly, in open form, this is called form, F-O-N. So this is the main uh, namespace. It is called namespace for open form under which all the classes and objects are defined. Okay, so, so let's say you want to write a function which is uh, within open form and you want to compile it. So what you have to do is you have to define the function as form colon colon then your function name. So that means that that function is uh, belonging to the family of form which is same for all the open form codes, right, to standardize it. Now. So similar function within this form namespace are like one is FVC, which is, as I told, as you've seen before uh, in the higher level programming that FVC comes on. There FVC colon colon, some divergence, gradient, those functions are there, right? So FVC is a class, I will come in detail, which is the namespace of the functions to calculate the explicit derivatives, okay? Similarly, FVM is the namespace for all the functions to calculate the implicit derivative returning a matrix equation. Okay, so, so basically in the governing partial differential equation, some of the terms you can solve explicitly and some of the terms you do not have known 
uh, known variables to calculate, you need to calculate it implicitly. And if you have gone through any CFD course, you know that well. So open form has two different namespaces for to you know gather and collect all those functions within. Okay. The other one, let's say function object, as I told, all the utilities or functions that are, that you write within open form that should belong to the namespace of function object. And everything related to the finite volume uh, approach or finite volume strategy, all the source code should belong to the namespace of FV. Okay. So I think it is clear. What do you mean by namespace? Okay. So what do you mean by classes and objects? I'm just giving a basic example. Like in any code, like the type you define, like integer, double, float, those are basically classes. And then we define a variable, let's say a, as int a. So here the type int is a class in object oriented programming okay and then the variable that we are defining is a is an object within that class so whenever you call an object you have to also mention the corresponding class to it that will define that you want to use this object from the mentioned class right and what are the advantages the advantages are that we can use the same attributes the construction, destruction, and all the other methods related to those objects will be similar if they belong to the same class, okay? So for example, for your understanding, it is the int class or the type, which is a class that defines how the mathematical or arithmetic operators work, like plus, multiplications, subtraction, how that will work with those particular, uh, particular object. So for example, if you have an integer defined, two integer, they will be added in one manner. However, you can, if you want to add uh, an integer and a string, they will be added in another manner, right? You know, if you know the basic programming, because they belong to two different classes. Is that clear? Okay, so now let us come to open form classes. What are the classes that are defined in open form? So one is space and time, okay? These are very basic, you know, that if you want to create a source code or a case, tutorial case in open form, you need to think of the space and time. That means you need to know how to handle the mess spatially and how to handle the discretization of the domain and then how to march in time. So if you solve the Navier-Stokes equation on the grid points of the concerned maze, you need to also know how to advance in time, right? So you need a time integration scheme for that. So this is a particular section of the open form class which takes care of the space and time. Similarly, the other class is field algebra, right? So once you solve the governing equation, you have some solution as field variables that may be scalar, that may be vector or tensor, okay? That may be dimension or that may be geometric in many ways. So you need some class of objects which will handle the field algebra, okay? Similarly, the other one is boundary condition, which is very important. The other one is uh, handling the matrix equation. Uh, when you are using FVM namespace, that means you are solving the equations implicitly, which will inherently give rise to matrix equation. So you need to <coughs> handle different linear solution techniques to solve those matrix equation, right? So you need a particular class to handle those objects. And then comes the finite volume discretization, okay? So you need to have a particular class which will take care of all the finite volume strategies so coming to each one of this so the first thing is time class so uh, the time itself is a class in open form and which is very important because which is the root for all the input output and object registry okay so within and uh, in i will show you in the priority list this class is on the top okay and it is often uh, denoted by the keyword or the object called runtime okay so r u n small then t capital i m e so this runtime is 
related to the time class which is of high priority because when you start a solution it will first go to the run time and then at starting from zero it will come one by one to mesh it will look up for the mesh objects and the other things then it will look up for solution schemes then it will solve the uh, solve solve the equation and then it will look for field object and field uh, geometric field classes and so on okay and the main control for this time class is in the control dict file if you have already seen that the, all the runtime control are given there okay as the start time end time delta t whether you want time adaptive solution or not in terms of current number and so on okay how many of you know how to control current number in open form anybody uh, by changing think... mesh size and delta t yeah but in open form how do you control that what is the uh, object for that i think so in what control is the function dict we can specify the maximum current number value yes true yeah i was asking for that so there is a max co number and also you have to mention whether you want adaptive solution yes or no okay fine so coming to the space we have different classes called the first one is called polymesh okay which you already know like because you a polymesh folder is uh, gets created in the constant folder where has all the definitions like points boundary the neighbors face cells and etc all the information related to your mesh so that is handled by the polymesh class okay yeah so please bear with me this would be a bit boring then i will go to the hands on part but it is very important to know these classes to know the source code okay so there comes the primitive mesh which handles the cell and face combinations like uh, the relations between cells and the faces because when you calculate the fluxes at the end of one time iterations after the solution of navier stokes equation those fluxes are defined with face okay face they are calculated as separately as volume fluxes and the face fluxes and those relationships are handled by primitive mesh class and there comes the poly boundary mesh which handles the poly patches i mean if you have common patches in between different cells it is handled by that and a very important class is fv mesh which handles all main mesh related information for the finite volume method okay and then the advanced class is dynamic mesh library dynamic mesh is a separate class which handles your mesh motions so there are a number of mesh motion strategies by which you can simulate moving body simulations and those are handled by the dynamic mesh library coming to the field algebra okay so there are uh, the main class that is related here is geometric boundary field within geometric boundary field you have volume scalar field volume vector field surface scalar field surface tensor field so, so do all these classes are actually categorized uh, based on your uh, the type of the field variable whether it is a scalar whether it is a volume volume field or surface field or whether it is a vector or tensor and so on and they are generally in this uh, right hand side the flow chart you can see that this geometric field type interacts with the dimension field because you know that in open form everything is dimensional right so everything has an unit related to it physical unit and then it interacts with the field class and then it uh, it allocates all those results as a list and then there is also u list which is unallocated list okay so these are uh, some of the nitty gritties of the source code uh, which is handled the special part is by geometric field and fine coming to the boundary condition you have a very important open form classes which handles it i mean basically these classes has all the source code related to your boundary condition which is fb patch field is one of them and fb patch field also interacts with the class called fb patch right uh, and fb patch field has different type of boundary condition already defined within as objects like fixed value zero gradient mixed coupled and there are different constant boundary condition like cyclic empty symmetry and also there are some derived and 
you can always add your own boundary condition through your own source code there is that capability but if you want to do so you have to define that within the base class fb patch field you have to know that this is the class within which i have to add a new boundary condition okay and the geometric boundary field basically the boundary patches are directly related to this fb patch fields because those are the patches where you want to apply your boundary condition okay so basically geometric field calls geometric boundary fields object and then it there is a loop over each fb patch field is done i mean so so basically this is the workflow how the different classes interact with each other okay and coming to the linear solver a uh, linear algebra solver so as you all know that the navier stokes equation when you write in a higher order term it actually uh, acts like a m into q equal to x something in the form of a linear algebra equation where m is a to the coefficient matrix q is your variables and then uh, x or h whatever you call is the uh, right hand side including all the other terms of navier stokes equation or any transport equation so basically those all those matrix equation comes within the class of called uh, which is called ldu matrix okay and which is also a part of the main class fb matrix so what is ldu matrix so you might have seen this term often but uh, not many people actually know what actually it is so ldu matrix is a general matrix class in which the coefficients are stored as three ways one for the upper triangle one for uh, that is for u one for the lower triangle l and the third one is diagonal okay so basically uh, it's some something like lu decomposition if you know the numerical method so something like that so this is a particular class which arrange all the matrices in this format in open form and you have different linear solution mechanism like pcg that is precondition conjugate gradient pbicg Preconditioned biconjugate gradient solver, geometric multi grid solver, smooth solver, diagonal solver. All these different solvers are there in open form for solving uh, the symmetric as well as asymmetric matrices. And all these solvers are defined within the basic class of FB, FB matrix. Okay. And this is an example of how the preconditioning is done but i think it's not very important at this stage so pre, by preconditioning what you mean is uh, it the chosen preconditioner should make sure that the convergence of the precondition system is much faster for the original one so here the m is the preconditioner which is multiplied in both the left hand and the right hand side that means you are basically not changing the system of equation however numerically you are making the convergence faster right and there are different type of preconditioning left preconditioning right preconditioning and there are different type of preconditioners also available in open form and so this is basically some two example i just snip from my terminal so sorry for the uh, resolution and so how you can change your preconditioners and linear solvers uh, by tuning it to the particular case you want to simulate and there is also another aspect of under relaxation which you can use to uh, to make your solution better but by tuning your uh, <coughs> speed of convergence again for different cases and this can be done with fixed norm cases uh, which is defined here by the tolerance so you can see that within each equation pressure velocity and final pressure and final velocity equations there is a term called tolerance that means that you are uh instructing the solver to keep on iterating till you reach towards that particular threshold of your solution i mean of your residual or error so which is called fixed norm uh, simulations coming to the finite volume discretization as i've already explained it has mainly two parts one is finite volume calculus and finite volume method by fbc and fvm and finite volume calculus is done in an explicit way with known geometric field values and the finite volume method calculation is done in an implicit manner which results in matrix solution okay and the other important part is the surface interpolation okay which actually uh, facilitate the transfer of the data from the cell to face through the different geometric field classes as i've already explained right 
So these are some of the examples calculations which are done within FVC and FVM, uh, like calculation of deri time derivatives, calculation of gradient, divergence, Laplacians, curls, etc., which are very essential if you want to write a source code. Because if you want to write a source code, you need to know how to how to represent your governing equation in a higher level format or higher level programming language by using the already existing functions of open form right so you need to know i want to solve a derivative let's say i want to represent du dt a time derivative of velocity i need to use what ddt of a or ddt of rho a which one is incompressible and which one is compressible and for solving the ddt what scheme should i use should I use first order scheme, second order scheme, Euler scheme, or uh, Crack Nicholson scheme, or whatever from the CFD perspective? So, and these schemes also differ from scalar to vector to tensor. So, you have to have a good grasp of your basic fluid mechanics and CFD to write this code. Okay. Okay. Coming to the object registry. So, what do we mean by object registry? Okay, uh, before that I will stop. Do you have any questions till now?